Well boys, it's time to show the Zuma some love again. Uh, last time we messed with this thing, we installed these cool LED lights, uh, which was a pretty cool mod and very helpful, especially on the ride we did in Seattle. But one thing that wasn't helpful when we were in Seattle is the fact that this thing does not have a fuel gauge. So it has a tack, it has a temp gauge, and when you delete the cluster, one thing that you sacrifice is a fuel gauge. So to fix that issue, we got a cool little package here from the boy Zoom and Zuma again. And that is the same homie that builds and makes these lights right here for sale, which you can get for the Zuma. So in here, uh, we have what he just finished up making, which should be a fuel gauge. Whoa. All right, we got, whoa, no way. No way. We got more than what I just thought. What we got here is new eyelets for the LEDs in white. That is pretty cool. I did not expect that. And it looks like he also sent us a white cup holder. Man, this thing is nice, bro. I think he did it like that so you could still read the original VIN that's there too. That's why he cut it out like that. That is a uh, very nice, very quality. So I think even this cup holder has spacers that go into the original OEM holes. That way it can bolt right in. Now that is amazing. Boom. We got the kit, boys. Like I said, I knew this was gonna be a full kit type of deal. Step one, very needed here. It's time to hydrate, and I'm gonna throw in some liquid IV into my drink. If you don't know, now you know I'm helping you, I'm putting you on right now. Non-GMO, liquid IV, super hydrating. Two to two and a half times faster hydration than just water alone. So I'm gonna drink one of these. It's almost comparable to be drinking three of them. So you know what competing brands like Pedialyte and everything like that, if you know what those are, you know, you know what this is. It's a super hydration multiplier. Definitely recommend drinking these. I've been drinking them now, especially in the summer we're having in Vegas when it's over 100 degrees, 110 degrees sometimes. And it's hard to drink that much water when you're out here working on stuff. You know you need those electrolytes and everything to keep you going. This will solve that. Just crack one of these bad boys open right here. Crack that bad boy open with my bottle of water here. I'll mix it all up. Oh man, the fans got blown away. Mix it all up and then you got yourself a nice lemon lime beverage. And lemon lime is definitely my favorite. If you want to try it out, I definitely recommend it. Again, everybody needs a little bit more hydration. Check the code on the screen here. Go to liquidiv.com, insert that code, save some money, and get to try it. Shout out Liquid IV. All right, so just went through the instructions to get an idea of what I'm doing. It's a lot, but this is pretty cool. So from what I'm reading, when it gets to about a third of tank, this little LED light that I'm going to probably do the straight bar mount and it's going to be like a little light right here will turn on, which means I'm at a third tank. Once it's at one quarter of the tank, it's going to flash. So it's not just a light that just lets you know when you're like about to run out of gas. It does have small settings like that to flash and everything when alerting you when it's like really out of gas. So this is going to be super sleek. Like you're not even going to be able to see it. It's literally going to be like a little light down here. So I don't have to have any more like uh, gauges. I don't have to put anything on my bars. I don't have to get any special mounts or anything like that. For any gauges. These gauges were already hard for me to mount because I didn't want them on the bars. And this is literally the only spot. So I really don't have anywhere else for a gauge unless I put it on the bars. So I want this scooter to be like really sleek looking and not have much wiring to it. Well, let's get to it. So I'm pretty much gonna have to remove everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then uh, we'll get into it so you don't wanna see the boring stuff. All right, we got everything taken apart. The only reason I'm not taking this one off is because my gauges are double sticky taped on. Remove OEM sending unit from the tank, replacing the duh duh duh. So we're going to go ahead and unplug that right now. Check that out. So that's the green one. <laughs> Looks like it just does a quick little loop around here. Just got it a little tucked in here. Yours might be a little different. I don't want to put the new unit in yet because I want to be able to test it with the trigger. So I'm going to set the new unit aside for now. And this looks like it'll be the sending unit harness, which is really nice. And it looks like it's all wrapped up for us too. So wire harness cable, really nice quality there, boys. Not only is this like a simplified one, but this is like quality, dude. This is nice. Shrink wrapped. It's got some nice cable uh, protection. Here's what it looks like it's going to go into the motherboard side. And obviously to the back of the gas tank side. So I'm just going to kind of route it to the same area run it underneath here, and then have it pop out, like it said, under the horn. Yeah, pretty simple, you take out the two bolts for the straight stem, if you have this style, and you just put the two bolts, put them through there, slide this thing, now it's in the crack, the LED lights in there as well, 
I can use it that See, and then I ran a zip tie around just to hold it all in there. So now I got the wires ran. Besides the straight stem one, there is one that is a bar clamp. Like I said, you put the LED through there, and it will look like that little thing right there. So it's all sleek. That's what mine is down there. Next thing we're going to work on is unplugging the three wire connector from the ignition cylinder, plugging in the 12 volt pigtail. So it comes with one, nice enough, that has a pigtail off the side of it. So we're going to unplug this bad boy right there, the three connector one, and that's going to be plugged into there. Alright, so unplug it, boom, now we plug it in this side to here, see if I can do this one handed. There we go, plug this one back into the other side that we just unplugged. Now we got this bad boy connector, I think this is going to go over to this side, also on the horn side and plug into our little box as well. So now we got all our connectors over here and uh, let's see what's next, boys. Here we got our, I don't even know what you'd call it. I'm gonna call it the motherboard. I'm sure it's called something else. Slides on out. Whoa, all right, so now we got that in there. He shows in the photo mounted this way. So I'm gonna clean the plastic and then we're gonna use these sticky pads to stick it on the back panel. All right, those panels back on. Circuit board thingy majiggers mounted. Now we're going to go ahead and follow the instructions, plugging in some of these little wires here. So um, I'm not going to go too into depth on exactly what, because it says it all in the instructions. And if you're getting this, you'll most likely have the instructions at hand. All right, lucky enough, it shows you a photo on here, very detailed on exactly where the wires go. Here it is right here. I ran through the cover. That way I can put the cover right on, as you can see. Pop the cover back in there, cover's in there. All my wires are plugged in. This is cool, because now that we have this, Look at all these possibilities of things we can add. And the homie, Zoom and Zuma, probably has a lot of plans for what the reason he has this for. So, um, he already did the LED lights, like I said. Now, it might be able to plug the LED lights into here. He might be able, there's like a whole, this is like a harness outside your harness. So, who knows the possibilities of what we can get into. But, uh, that's that. So, now we got everything plugged in. We should be able to plug in the intake sensor now and watch this light turn on. So, let's see. Now, if all goes right, this thing should flash. Oh yeah, boys. It's blinking. So right now, it's blinking. <clears throat> so this would be, in theory, if your tank is empty, because that's hanging at the lowest point. Now if you have gas, right, it's going to float up, so therefore, it should shut off. Now if it's at a third of a tank, the directions say that it'll stay steady on. Wow, boys. Look how sleek that is, too. Tucked way in there. Look at that. Just way in there. Steady tanking. All right, boys. Next step, because I want to show that outside. Um, pretty cool how that thing works. That is dope. So now, all we got to do, unplug this, unbolt these four 8mm bolts, drop that one in, and that should be the final of the install. There's a cable in the box up for updating or changing the code if you ever buy any products from Zoom and Zoom in the future that utilize the Ar 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 Arduino board, headless tele, etc. Look at this. We get literally got a USB cable that you'd be able to plug into a computer, possibly to update, to program new things. This is next gen stuff. Not only is it simple, it's very complex when you actually look at it. So it's kind of a win win. You get the simple look with so much complexity. You'd plug this little like computer style cable into there, and then you'll be able to plug into a computer, put the updates on it to maybe have the program where the tail lights with the banner that he put on his Instagram with actual text going by. That's what I want next. And I can't wait till we get to that point, boys. But you got some zip ties in there, comes in the package. Everything you need comes in this kit. <clears throat> got the tank pulled out. We're looking like we're pretty empty in there. So technically when we turn that light on, it should be flashing. Uh, it looks like it's border, below quarter tank. So all right, boys, we got the scooter back together. Now we got our Zoom and Zuma headlights in there. Got the fuel gauge in there. Everything should be uh, flashing actually because we're low on gas. So let's see if it keeps flashing. Yeah, boys, we're low on gas. So let's go ahead and just make sure that everything still works on this bad boy. Yeah, boys, we need a fill up. Headlights are still working. I like what he's doing. He's bringing a lot of newer style things and not just the basic stuff. 
um, to the Zuma. Some one-off stuff, some really creative things, and I can't wait to see what he does with the taillights. Again, check out Zoom and Zuma if you're interested in this. The link will be down in the description down below. Um, first people to use the link will get a discount. So make sure you check that out down below if you're looking to get something like that. Keep your bars clean, no gauge needed on your bars, and uh, very sweet. Next thing we're gonna do, take off this 12 bar. I'm gonna give you one look at this uh, 12 bar before we do some final changes just so you get an idea of it. But uh, yeah, boys. Zoom will work in today. I'm stoked to be back in the garage. It's been a while. Feels good in here. I thought I'd show a little video of it on the scoot so you can see what the 12 bar looks like up close. This thing fits so good. And if you could see, we tried to follow the body lines and have it taper in a little bit. A lot of people have these things and they just run straight, big old square things. Um, that works if you just want as most contact on the ground as possible. But I was trying to go with more of a good looking bar representing the stock bar in a way and it looks really good. So we put a lot of time into this thing. So so as you can see, the scrape bar is here and it's at an angle. So the bike's at full tilt, it's exactly flat. And we're gonna have titanium scrape blocks available, um, which are gonna be on the next model that I will show, um, hopefully within the next couple of weeks of this thing. So we got my little tool bag that I keep right here and it's just zip tied in there that I'm gonna have to take off right now because I'm gonna unbolt this thing. So that's with no tool bag. And as you see, um, a lot of the ones I've seen people make have just been like a flat bar right here for the support. And then it's just like a flat bar of plastic. We used a tube design, the tubular design to it. And as you can see, it's kind of like a shape of an ice cream cone. I think it looks really cool. Final model, we'll have something with like a dimple plate here, grip tape possibly for your foot to grab onto really nicely. And yeah, so I'm gonna show you once I unbolt this, how we did these tabs to make them even stronger as well. So a lot of things to this were designed to make it Structurally as strong as we possibly could. We welded washers in the end of the tubes here to make it where a bolt won't go through. So it's a thicker metal, same tube as this with like a closed end. So a bolt fits on it very nice. As you can see, the bottom fits perfectly. Look at that. This thing is by far the best scrape part I've ever seen. So uh, bolts right up. I drilled out my plastic a little bit more just preventing it from like cracking while putting it in. I didn't want it sitting on top of the plastic, so. That mine sits way in there when I put it in, and they're flush and nice. So, but that's gonna do it for these. Like I said, hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll show you a final product, and then we talk about when they're gonna be going on sale. But coming soon. That's gonna do it for the Zoomers today. I'll see you in the next one.